Hi, this is Eddie Tate, and you're listening to the Colton Chroma podcast. I caught up with Hillary last week to chat with her about her entry into this year's Brisbane Portrait Prize. Hillary began by explaining how she came to enter this year and then shared what her process was like to paint her portrait of Selma Soul. Last year was the first year Brisbane started the Brisbane Portrait Prize and I heard about it just a little bit too late and I probably was not feeling ready enough to, you know, participate last year. But I went to the exhibition, we did a blog post write-up on it. Yeah, I tucked it in the back of my head that that would be something I'd want to try this year to challenge myself because I have done one portrait before. It was a gift from my mom. Um, of my brother. The whole idea is that the sitter and the painter are both meant to have a connection to Brisbane. So I thought about the people in Brisbane that I am inspired by and also I thought of the people that would be really visually fun to paint and I didn't get too much further than Selma Soul (laughs) in my thinking. (laughs) Yeah. So how did you decide the size of your painting? I had gone to the exhibition last year and there were some really big pieces, which I love to look at as a person consuming the art, but I have never really painted on a huge scale before. I've done one mural, which was exhausting. I was pregnant when I did it. So I don't have a great, <laughs> a really great memory of that one. I mean, you know. I remember it. It was epic. I couldn't believe, yeah, you are such a trooper. I was so impressed. Thanks. Um, And then I just did a painting during uh, the early kind of COVID time. That was a bigger canvas that I had left over in my garage. So I kind of knew that if I wanted to get a bigger piece done, it was going to take a little bit more out of me. So I, I went a little bit bigger than I usually paint on, which is something like what we do in studio. Um, 40 by 50 centimeters and I think it was something like 60 by 72 centimeters or something so just Mm. a little bit bigger. Wow amazing and how did the photo shoot come together because I I think you sent me a photo of what you were working from which was Selma reflected oh it was incredible in in um, iPads is it and then the mirror and then his he she is also in the photograph how did you come up with that concept? That was really fun. So this year, because of COVID, they did not have a requirement that you had to have a sitting in person with them, which usually that is a requirement. You need to have one, at least one sitting with your person that you're your sitter. But this year they didn't require it, but I felt for me and for my process that I'd benefit from just meeting up with Ethan. And I've been working from photos recently. I also find that I paint better when I have a really clear reference. Mm. So I really wanted to get, capture an image that I could use as a strong reference for the painting. So yeah, the intention there was to go, I went on a Monday, it was Ethan's day off and yeah, they agreed to put makeup on for me that day and that we would take some photos. But we really didn't plan the look or anything I started to try to, I was messaging Ethan one night and I was like, what are you going to, what are you going to, what's the look, you know, so I could start picturing it or something. But then I, it just felt a little too forced. And I was like, let's just get there on the day and just see what unfolds, which ended up being really, really fun. Honestly, like one of the best parts of the whole process for me was just kind of having that day with another artist and someone who does something that I don't do. And just to watch Ethan speak about drag, put on drag, pose. And, you know, it just was a, it was a great experience to see someone else do their art and capture it. That's incredible. And even when you're talking about wanting to sort of pre-plan a little bit and get a bit of a visual, I can so imagine even like, that's just so his character is just to pull it out, you know, out of thin air. And I think working with him would have been, I think he'd have that confidence to bring that to the to the process and then it just would have been bounce 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 totally oh, and it's fine. yeah the, um i think that's part of what i also really loved about painting salma's portrait is that i feel like through the process of painting i had to really understand salma's process mm-hmm. to capture 
somehow that essence of Selma on the painting. I really like kind of observed that that day. The art really reflected that exact moment. So like we had had some coffees, I had brought coffee over and I think Ethan had already had a coffee. And so we were <laughs> kind of like jittery and shaky and then um, he started doing his makeup and like the lines were shaky. And <laughs> yeah. he said that he was like, you know, oh, was they're that? such shaky lines, but I'm just gonna go with it. And then the whole look wow. just like that. So it just, it inspired, it came out of the moment, which was a huge and wonderful lesson for me because, you know, sometimes I can try to overthink the moment ahead of time and then yeah. you're not actually being present, so. Absolutely. And that kind of, <laughs> that's, yeah, I think that's so Ethan and, and his work is so related to what we do, I think visually and as painters. Like, I think he, he really works very sculpturally. He's such a unique drag queen his work is real incredible art that's so unique and i every look seems to be so different and probably just goes with how he's feeling at the time absolutely and that's really what i'm trying to do more and more of thanks to him like thanks to oh. that lesson that he gave and that gift that he gave me to show me that you know to be able to be present and to create art that affects people i think you really need to know who you are and i think you really have to have an appreciation for yourself. And that's not an easy thing to do. And especially, you know, Ethan has told his story that it's, it wasn't easy for him to be himself always. You know, luckily he got a lot of strength from his family and friends, but that's just amazing. So I think that presence that Ethan has as Ethan, but also as Selma. And we spoke a lot about that that day, like where is, where does Ethan sort of end and where does Selma ah, begin and, and does it actually? And we spoke a lot about um, their pronouns and Ethan said, they'll tell people, my pronouns are he, she, they, them. Like any, call me anything. I'm kind of everything, wow. you know? So it was, yeah, such an inspiring person. And since it was only my second portrait, I was really kind of figuring out exactly what painting a portrait is at the same time as I was trying to do it. So I really looked a lot to the person that Ethan is as the inspiration. Look, there was no drought of inspiration there, you know, because Ethan's awesome. It was a joy to do that painting. I loved it. The, there's something I wanted to ask you about. I remember you messaged me and you got to this point where you realized that you're trying too hard to, I think it was replicate the photograph. And it was this sort of big realization where you're like, I need to be me and I need Ethan to be Ethan and I need to combine that. Like, how did you get to that point? What, what kind of, where was that light bulb moment? Totally. I took that image as a photo and I planned to paint that photograph as a painting. And so I traced it all up and it's basically a photo of Selma holding a frame, looking in a mirror. And there's two of these like, beautiful, really specialized makeup mirrors that um, are sitting on the makeup table as well. So there's three reflections of Selma's face at three different angles. And then the person's profile, um, like, you know, looking in the mirror. So it was a pretty ambitious uh, <laughs> composition. I mean, painting one face is hard enough that I'm not even prepared to go to yet. And then you painted one, two, three, and then you have half of also the, I don't know what that's And called. then the profile, yeah. So obviously like the big reflection, the big mirror was kind of my most important in my head. That was the most important one to really get because that was the, big, the biggest face and the reflection. Actually in that image, the eyes were looking right at the camera. So that's the one that's looking at the, the viewer of the art. Bring it in, yeah. And then I just, I tried so hard for so many nights to get the face right. And I was just kept looking at the image, the picture and trying yeah. to copy it. And what I realized is that I had lost the spirit of it. I was so obsessed with the, the, the technicality or I don't know, trying to copy and paste. So I kind of lost the idea that actually this is a painting. This is not a replication of a photograph. So stop trying to make it a, rep a replicate of a photograph. You have to infuse some spirit into this as well. It can't just be an image. 
So that's when I really start to, to think more about Ethan's process and how Selma is and how Selma got to be where she is and what Ethan had to kind of like pull from his soul to be able to express Selma in all of the different expressions that she does. So that's when I kind of came up with a little bit more conceptual piece where I thought the reflections in the mirrors would actually be different faces of Selma mm -hmm. instead of just from that day because Selma is so multifaceted that I thought yeah. let's just have all these different looks yeah I also loved the floating head someone uses that in his Instagram a little bit I don't know how you describe that yeah so this you, cool. was that a yeah that day when we were talking about Selma and I was interviewing taking some video footage Ethan told me the origin story that he created for Selma, and it includes the big head in the sky. It's this deity. And oh. <laughs> yeah. So, and the, the big head used to have lots of hair, but it shaved its head and created a child out of it, which is a neutral force in the battle between good and evil, and that's Selma. Oh, wow. Right? Wow. So then, yeah, when I really started to think more on Selma and the things that we spoke about that day and the depth of Selma, that's when I got inspired to do something with that story as well. And I think that's why, for me anyway, I don't, I don't know what people will think of the painting. You know, I hope people think it's interesting. I, I don't know. I just, the way I view it is that it's much more layered now even though maybe it's a bit more confused or jumbled. It has more of a narrative, which I really love because I love paintings that give my imagination something to spin on, you know? Absolutely. I think I can really relate to, to that process of letting go of the, the photograph. I get this sense of freedom around that. Like, did you feel kind of free? Well, it was kind of scary because I had painted quite a bit of what was inside the mirror before I painted over it and then did the bigger head. So it's like, you know, to kind of start over or take what feels like steps backwards in a piece, mm -hmm. it was nerve wracking because you feel like, well, if, if this isn't the right path, then I've taken two, then I'm down two wrong turns, you know? Yep. Yeah, I know you know, because I know you have a piece that you were working on too. But then once I did it and sort of like actually took the stress out of it, stopped getting so caught up on the actual copy and paste of the image, started to have more fun with it, started to channel something else other than just like getting this painting done. Like really yeah. starting to really have my own little process around painting it. It got really fun and yeah, actually, like you said, really freeing. If you enjoyed this conversation about Hillary's painting process for the Brisbane Portrait Prize, tune in to our next episode where we invite you to be a fly on the wall as we continued our conversation on big paintings and the discoveries we've made during our recent painting projects. Until next time, thanks for listening. <laughs>